Thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Welcome, Theo. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the introduction there. It's um, it's uh, always great to be here on a Friday <laughs> afternoon for a uh, for yes. a change. Awesome, awesome. So uh, I think you are able to share your screen. Please. Excellent. Yep. I think we're getting ready to uh, get ready to begin here. Just hopefully you should hopefully bring up my awesome. uh, slides. Okay, Paul, good luck from me. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Thea. Thank you for the introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Um, here we are on a Friday afternoon, and uh, I hope you're uh, hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good trading week. Um, great for you to be joining us uh, here to, today. It's just a little bit of a change up today for our sessions, but uh, fabulous to be here. Fabulous to uh, have you all with us for what is going to be session 21 of our uh, price action trading guide. And uh, what we're going to focus on today is how to improve our trade entries. So uh, throughout this series, you know, we have talked about, you know, just uh, sort of being able to, to provide you with a little bit of education, a little bit of knowledge, a bit of insight into what price action trading is and how to conduct it. Uh, and today is probably just a little bit more of an, a, uh, an advanced session in terms of looking about, you know, how we improve our trade entries. Uh, and we'll dig deeper into that. All right, as we go uh, further into our uh, into our session. So, um, as I said, uh, you know, it's great to have you all here with us today. Um, we appreciate here at Admirals that you know we are uh, you know this is the English speaking webinars. We have a global audience joining us, okay, and uh, wherever you are joining us in the world, whether it be here in the live session or on the uh, watching this on demand later on the uh, Admirals YouTube channel, it's great to have you here. You're very welcome. We hope you're uh, all having a great uh, a great year so far. Furthermore, um, you know, we also recognize that, you know, we have a broad range of experience of people who join us for our sessions. So we have people who are complete beginners, uh, for those of you who've been trading for a, a good while. You're all welcome here. There'll always be something for you to take away. You know, we might be sort of helping sort of uh, uh, enable new traders to understand what price action is. But there's always like one or two little uh, additional tweaks that I throw in from my own experience to sort of help uh, uh, elevate and evolve those of you who are of a been trading for a uh, particular while. So um, with that in mind, for those of you who are here today, it would be interesting to know, you know, uh, at the moment, you know, how do you conduct your trade entries? Once you've identified the trade you want to take, how do you basically, uh, you know, how do you enter a trade, all right? It'd be interesting if, you know, you can just put that in the chat box, right? Just let me know what, uh, what you know, what you do at present. And hopefully what I'm going to share with you today will help it, uh, improve on that. So, yep, yeah, as always, uh, you know, uh, uh, my colleague Theo went through a good bit there, but you know, we're admirals here, you know, a, a Forex and CFD broker with uh, global presence and local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products uh, and providing the ability to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. Uh, and if you have any questions about admirals, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, not unsurprisingly, this is all about price action trading. So we'll be talking about uh, that for those of you joining us for the first time or just one or two slides just to sort of set the tone. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, you know, why would you want to improve your entries? All right. Why would you want to? Why is it important? OK, surely, you know, just any old entry is the uh, is is sufficient. Uh, and hopefully by the end of this session, you'll realize uh, why we would want to improve upon our entries. I'll talk a little bit about what the options are there for to improve your entries and, you know, we'll look at, you know, the pros and cons of using some advanced entries. Uh, and then if there's time at the end, what we'll do is we'll have a little look at the live market, see what's been going on uh, and maybe sort of see one or two uh, uh, ideas where, you know, what we've discussed here can basically be just showing up in uh, in the in the live markets. All right. I appreciate that. You know, it always helps to sort of embed the knowledge when you can see it, you know, in uh, you know, on a live market actually working away. So um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Paul. Okay, I've traded for many years, traded for funds, traded for clients. Uh, primarily, I like to focus on trading FX indices and commodities. Uh, for longer term trading, swing and position, I tend to be a trend trader. And my sort of shorter term aggressive trading tends to be sort of uh, rever mean reversion and reversal. And I will be sharing all those experiences with you as we go through um, this particular series. So we're going to continue the uh, price action guide, you know, based on helping traders understand and utilize price action in their trading. Uh, and the reason is, is because, 
you know, it's very easy for beginner traders to sometimes be intimidated by the amount of knowledge they think is required to be able to analyze markets, identify setups, trade markets, etc. And what we're here to show is that, you know, with just a little bit of education, a little bit of focus, a little bit of knowledge, and a little bit of understanding of how candlesticks and price action operate, well, then we can become, you know, quite a, a much easier way to analyze and understand markets. So, Normally, each Wednesday, today is a little bit different, we'll normally build upon the previous session to, uh, so that you're educated and informed how to use price action in your trading. And, and you know, we're covering an awful lot in this uh, series, uh, you know, sharing an awful lot with you, uh, uh, you know, plenty that will help both the new trader, uh, but also the sort of, let's say, the intermediate and advanced trader, a couple of elements that they can take and utilize themselves in their own trading. So, you know, for those of you who are completely new to trading, right, um, you know, you are very welcome here. Everybody has to start their journey somewhere, right? So you are very welcome. There's, a, there's no issues with that. But you might actually just be completely new and not even understand what price action trading is. And, and as the slide says, listen, it's the basic means of market analysis using price movement over time. It is popular with both retail and institutional traders. Uh, and we're analyzing the change in prices over time. That's the action that we're focused on. In our session, we'll mostly be focusing on the price action of the last three to six months because, you know, I recognize that the majority of people who join us, they're probably not trading full time. They're trading around their kind of existing lifestyle commitments. Maybe you've got, you know, a job, maybe you're running a business, your family commitments, etc. So actually your trading might only be an hour or two a day, OK, at the end of the day or the start of the day. Um, and so, you know, that's where we'll focus our efforts. But what I'll share with you and what I'll show you even today basically works across all time frames and instruments. Think of price action trading or understanding price action trading is, is about like you learning a new language, right? And like any new language, whether you want to learn you know, um, French or English, Swahili, whatever you choose to learn, right? So like anything, you, you know, you have to practice. Okay, You have to work at it. You have to practice it. And the more you practice at it, the better you get until it clicks and then invariably what looks just like, you know, a sort of, you know, a, a series of, you know, strange words or strange squiggles on a paper turns into something that you can interpret and read and use. And it's the same with price action, okay, on charts. You know, the more you practice it, the more you work at it, the more you do it, the more quicker it will click for you in being able to understand, you know, what is going on in the market, be able to analyze it, and most importantly, identify spots where you might want to start your trading and do your business. So, you know, we've covered a lot, all right? We have covered a lot so far. We're up to, so we're up to session 21. And uh, what I say every week is that, you know, I'm trying to mix both, let's say, hard skills and soft skills in uh, in this, basically, in this trading uh, series. The hard skills, okay, everybody loves a setup, right? Everybody loves a setup. Everybody loves, a, you know, a, a, a you know trade entry. Everybody does, you know. So we've covered lots of, let's say, those hard skills, okay, of trading things like, engulfing candles, star formations, key reversals, pin bars, inside bars, false breakouts, etc. All the, the hard skills, okay, that, well, new traders will need and every trader likes. But also we've mixed in that some of the soft skills, soft skills which new traders generally don't understand the importance of. Whereas those of you who've traded for a while will realize those soft skills. So things like being able to be prepared for, you know, for trading in, in the markets, all right? Managing risk, building trading plans, all right? Okay, managing your trades, using checklists, having routines, okay? How to, uh, you know, grade your uh, your trading. These are might, might be seen as the soft skills. And as I said, new traders sometimes don't really, don't really understand, you know, what's that all about? I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, the longer you trade, the more you'll realize that will become more important to you in terms of just managing yourself and you know, managing the way you interact with markets and ultimately helping you manage and build your own trading business. So we've covered a lot. You'll find them. They should all be on the Admiral's YouTube channel there, as my uh, colleague Thea was talking about at the beginning. I mean, you'll see them all there. Okay, you should be able to find them if you're just joining us halfway through this series. Find them there. By all means, go and watch them, okay? And today, as I said, we're going to talk about improving our trade entries. Um, if you remember, what we have said is that, you know, part of the thing, one of those soft skills is about building routines, having checklists, okay? Things that can actually help you just do the right thing time and time again. And we, we talked about sort of 10 steps. First five steps, very simple, okay? Whenever you open a chart, 
It doesn't matter what it is, right? It could be Bitcoin, it could be gold, right? It could be copper, it could be euro dot, it doesn't matter, right? The first thing you do is you start to draw on and define those levels of support and resistance. Start at the monthly, go down to the weekly, down to the daily, okay? Make sure they're on there. You might say to me, well, you know, Paul, I like to intraday trade on the five minute chart. Why would I be interested? Trust me, those levels are there and those levels will be relevant. Okay. And if even if you're an intraday trader, you know, you, you do not want to be buying into resistance or selling into support. Okay. What you want to do is you want to be aware of those, those particular levels because lots of traders will be watching them because they'll be a step two, defining to see if there is a trend in that instrument. You'll have heard me talk about it many a time before. Good trend leaps off the chart. To you. you don't need to force it. Okay. You don't need to push it. Good trends, le uh, good, yeah, good trends leap off the chart at you. And what we're looking to start to do is some of step three is, okay, you know, if there is a trend in place, well, you know, what we're interested in is we're looking to see how does price react at key support and resistance levels. Because if we're in an uptrend, we want opportunities to buy at support. If we're in a downtrend, we want opportunities to sell at resistance. And that support and resistance might well be the horizontal levels of support and resistance that you've drawn on there from step one. They might be big round psychological numbers, okay, which are uh, important. And you'll see, you know, as you look and do more analysis, markets will recognize when they are very, very uh, valid and valuable. Or it might be dynamic levels of support and resistance, okay? Maybe some of the moving averages that we will talk about, okay, where we see price bouncing off those. And that is an opportunity for us. So, as I said, we're looking to see how price reacts at those particular levels, those particular areas of interest. And with step four is what we're looking for is we're looking for particular price action triggers, all right, at those areas that are going to give us a trigger into a, you know, into a trade and entry into a trade. And those are the, some of those hard skills that we've talked about, things like pin bars, engulfing candles, key reversals, star formations, inside bars, etc. Looking for simple price action triggers that allow us to basically, you know, start to build a trade plan. But what we also want to be aware of is, is it part of a bigger chart pattern? It might just be one candlestick, but that one candlestick might be part of a bigger pattern. So something in a continuation pattern, like, like a flag pattern, okay, or maybe a wedge, all right, or maybe a triangle. So you want to be aware of those, okay, and just, just see it and look at it as part of your uh, overall just going through, okay, going through your routine to make sure that you're doing the right things at the right time every time you look at a chart. Um, and what we also said is that, you know, we would look at focusing at, you know, when it comes to FX, in terms of the instruments, you know, we'd look at focusing on the dollar index, followed by the 28 major pairs there, okay, which is pretty much, you know, most of those majors against the US dollar and against each other. We'll also look at indices, okay, so you've got the major American ones like S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, uh, major other global indices like FTSE 100 in the UK, the DAX 40 in Germany, okay, the Nikkei in Japan, the Aussie 200 in Australia. Some of the commodities, okay, oil, right, gold, silver, palladium, natural gas, you know, natural gas has been interesting, okay, for the last year, based on what we've seen going on in the world. And, you know, for those of you who like to, to basically look at stocks, particular equities. So lots of people are still interested in what was known as the fangs, okay? Things like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, right? They were just big American tech firms, okay, that are, are very liquid, okay, and move a great deal and provide, provide opportunity for traders. And also I recognize that we have, you know, traders who like to focus on crypto, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Ripple, et cetera. So... Price action works across all time frames and works across all instruments. And there is a there's a huge bundle there, okay, of instruments you can look at. And you know what I normally find is traders might start out on that, okay, and start there as the building of their skill base, building up their understanding. But as you develop as a trader, what will happen is you will probably find that you will focus yourself down, okay. So you might focus on one asset class. You might say, well, actually, Paul, do you know what? Um, I like trading FX, that's where I'm going to focus my time and energy, or maybe I like commodities, or I'm a crypto guy, and that's what I like to focus on. Others might just say, well, actually, Paul, you know, there's about half a dozen uh, instruments that I like to focus on that basically just allow me to, to, to basically uh, cover most of the markets and provide opportunity. Might be that you might focus on one particular FX pair. So, you know, a lot, lots of people might just trade the US dollar, okay, and, it, and it against the majors, or in the UK here, you know, they might be trading sterling. So, you know, there's, as I said, there's a wide scope here, which we will look at, gives us lots of opportunity, 
but you know, don't feel that you have to trade every single one. All of them are available on the Admiral's platforms. But what you'll find is, you know, with experience is that you will just basically probably start to hone down and focus on a certain number that actually resonate with you, that actually, you know, that you believe that you can you know, have an edge in, and that's what all the traders are looking to develop. So with all that in mind, why don't we talk about how to improve our trade entries? So, you know, I often find that, you know, very new traders, they, you know, as the slide says, they're happy to find uh, an entry for their trade, all right? Any entry is better than no entry for a new trader because they feel that they have to be, you know, engaged in the market, in the market all the time, okay? If they're not punching the buy and sell buttons, then how can they call themselves a trader? Which, you know, is all well and good to begin with, all right? You know, because, you know, you're learning how a platform works, learning how markets work, how to trade, etc. However, all right, as a trader, as you develop and as you develop an experience, okay, as you develop in terms of your focus and your routines and all those soft skills, what you will often find is, you know, uh, traders are looking for ways to improve their trade entries. Uh, and that's what we'll discuss today's session. We'll discuss an improved entry that traders can take away and use in their trading of price action reversal candlesticks. So I'm going to share a few ideas few ways to, to look at it, but also explain well, why why is it important? What you know, what relevance does it? Surely any entry is better than no entry, Paul. And I'm here to show that uh, that's not necessarily the case, ladies and gentlemen. So um, as the slide implies, you know, why would you want to improve your entries? What's the payoff? Why would you do that? Well, um, it, it's all to do with managing the risk to reward ratio. Sometimes you might hear me or other traders call it the R3, okay, your risk to reward ratio, namely, you know, what am I risking for, for what am I about to gain, okay, and, and what we're looking to do is to always to manage that and to improve that. And by improving our entries, okay, our trade entries, we are able to improve our R3 numbers, we're able to improve our reward to risk ratio. Uh, and why is that relevant or is it important? Well, you know, the better reward to risk ratios that you have, you know, the less stress and pressure and requirement there is on you to be right on every trade okay lots of traders they'd, they'd love to be right okay and in fact i would say many new traders would sooner be right than make money but that's another story for another day but what it is about is you know if you can always improve your reward to risk ratios on your trades what i said is it it, it reduces that stress upon you to basically make every trade a winning trade but more of that as we go dig deeper into this topic So um, firstly, let's understand what I would imply as trade risk, okay? You know, a trade risk as opposed to something like capital risk. Um, for me, this term, when you hear me talk about trade risk, what that determines is that determines the, the number of, whether it be pips or FX or points or ticks, okay, um, for indices, et cetera, um, between your entry and your stop loss, right? Wherever you're taking a uh, trade, okay, and we've talked about it in terms of risk management and, and you know, constantly talk about it here at Admirals is, you know, wherever, let's say, for example, that, you know, this is, this is a, you know, this is a big bullish engulfing candle, all right? And, you know, we would have our entry once once the price breaks above the, uh, the high of that uh, engulfing candle with our stop loss beneath the, the low. When I look at that trade risk, okay, that would be, you know, the number of, the number of points there between my entry and my stop loss. Now, this you know this particular chart, you know, there's no there's no time frame on it. That could be it could be a weekly chart, it could be it could be a, an hourly chart, it could be a one minute chart. It doesn't really matter. It's about recognizing the number of pips between the you know, the our entry and our stop loss. And let's just say, for example, that you know maybe it's twenty, maybe it's twenty pips on a five minute chart, maybe it's fifty pips on an hourly chart, maybe it's five hundred pips on a, a weekly chart. Okay. Regardless of the number of pips, that that risk, trade risk between your entry and your stop loss, you will hear traders talk about it as one unit of risk. You will hear them determine that as one R. Okay. You will hear me talk about that as you know, what I'm risking is I'm risking one R, that one unit of risk. And the important thing about that is, is that as traders, what we're looking to do is we're looking to earn multiples of R. Okay, so if I'm going to risk one R, I'm looking for trades that will give me the opportunity to generate two R or three R or four R or ten R, depending upon your particular trading style. 
But it's important to understand that at the very simplest terms about understanding trade risk, okay, and understanding what it implies, what it means, all right, as we start to understand how we can improve, okay, how we can improve our trade entries so that we can improve our reward to risk ratio. Okay, as I said, if I'm going to risk one R, I want to be able to generate two R, three R, four R, five R, et cetera, based upon the based upon what I'm particularly trading, you know, and, and what I'm actually looking to achieve. So, as I said there, it's important for us to understand what trade risk is because by doing so, it allows you to identify ways to improve your trade entries, to improve your trade risk, which allows us to improve our overall R3 numbers, our overall risk to reward ratio. So, with that in mind, how can we start to improve our trade entries, right? Well, um, I'm going to show you a thing that I talk a lot about, which is a thing called consistent targeting, but there's two elements to it which we'll, uh, which we'll talk about and I'll share with you here today. So, um, as I've mentioned in previous webinars, when you're looking to put a trade into the market, you are either going to use a target, okay, for your trade if it works out in your direction, or you might have a trailing stop, okay, a stop, a stop loss which becomes a stop profit as you trail, and you generally have one of those two choices. And there's lots of different ways you can do it, and there are you know mo many pros and cons for both. Neither one is perfect. What it is. Is about having a consistent way that you can sort of uh, replicate that trade after trade after trade. So um, for me, okay, you know, I'm you know my background was you know my youth was you know, I was an Air Force guy, all right. I'm an Air Force guy. Air Force guys like to hit a target, okay. It's just you know it's just you know it's it's trained into you, and and I bring that to my trading, okay. I like to hit a target, okay. I like to know where my entry is. I like to know where my stop loss is. If you know if I'm out when I'm wrong. And I'd like to know where my target is, okay, if the trade plays out in my favor. So, so effectively, the, you know, all the reasons are is that I can basically place the trade. I can almost fire and forget my trades if I if I need to. So today, what I'll do is I'll share my own tools, okay, that I use to help and find simple, consistent targets and help me increase the reward to risk in my trades, okay, by improving my entries. Now, you know, you, you might be someone who likes to trail a stop, and that's fine. You'll find that this is, you know, in terms of entries, this is absolutely applicable, All right? It's just me sharing uh, my ideas and my thoughts how you can do it to improve your trade entries so that you can improve your reward to risk ratios. Um, and this is where we use the tools of MT4 and MT5, which are offered to you with Admirals, and also we'll simply use a Fibonacci tool there, okay? So um, if you look on the Admirals, uh, Admirals YouTube channel, so you'll find there's quite a few videos there on what Fibonacci is and uh, how you can utilize it and the price it plays. Um, today, I'm just going to focus on how I use the Fibonacci tools on the platforms to help me set my target, set uh, an improved aggressive entry, okay? It's where I use a pullback within my trigger candle to enact an entry that provides an improved reward to risk ratio, all right? That's that's what we want to do. We want to improve our trade entries. So um, I'm not going to read through that, but what I'm going to suggest is you might want to just take a screenshot, okay, of that. Just basically click, click that button on your thing as you're watching this, take a screenshot of it. Why? Because um, what this does is this on both the MT4 and MT5 platforms provided by Admirals, what it allows you to do is it allows you to improve, okay, the Fibonacci tool. So what it does is it puts the price values on the uh, on the, the, the Fibonacci ratios and the Fibonacci tools. So um, here we go. Hey, you can talk through, the, you can read through that. As I said, take a screenshot so you can set this up on your uh, on your chart later but what i have is you know when i draw on okay when i draw on my fibonacci tool over my trigger candles what you can probably see there is that you know it basically tells me what the level is and what the actual number is which actually helps me enormously because when i'm trying to work out you know where to place my stop loss where to place my entry etc okay where my target is i know exactly what the level is all right i know exactly what the level is and what what it is in terms of its fibonacci as a 50% retrace, or is it a 261 Fibonacci extension? Okay. So it just makes the tool more useful. So, as I said, take a screenshot of that in the after the session, go through. And if you haven't already set up your chart like this or your MT5 or MT4, uh, utilize this tool on the Fibonacci tool. And when we switch across to the live charts, I'll, I'll quickly show you. Um, and it will it will make your life a lot easier. All right. It just it will help you, okay, to make your uh, make your trading just a little bit easier. So how do I use it? Well, 
And um, first, I'm using it for my stop loss. Remember, risk management always comes first. Okay. Remember what we've talked about in previous sessions on risk management, namely that you should never trade without stop loss and you should never risk more than a small portion of your account on any of your trades. If you're doing those two things, okay, then you are starting off on the right path with risk management, okay, in terms of basic risk management. Um, and, you know, what we do is I use this as a standard level to, to help place my stop loss at, okay. And what that means is, when I sort of string my fib tool, okay, over, you know, this is a, you can see here, that's a bearish engulfing candle, all right. When I strip, you know, put it over there, what I can see is, the, you know, the high of that, it's telling me exactly what that number is, 108.86. So, you know, for normally for me, my stop loss is normally a, a couple of pips plus the spread. I mean, I'm shorting a couple of pips plus the spread, right? So, you know, in that case, let's say it might be, you know, my stop loss might be going in at 108.90, all right? So two pips plus let's say a two pip spread. So just for the, for the ease of sums, okay? Uh, and, you know, and that gives me my, so I know where my stop losses and over, I'm getting out if I'm wrong, okay? But here's the interesting point, okay? And this is the point to take notice of in terms of improving trade entries is when I've identified that, okay? My entry goes at, we can see here is called the third level, right? And what that is, is that is basically, I've got the FIB tool set up, to identify where is a third of the way back into my trigger candle. So I'm not sort of trading the break of the candle, I'm trading the price trade back into that candle, all right? Why am I doing that? Well, especially on the intraday trading, okay, I'm primarily a momentum trader. I'm expecting, you know, when a trend is starting, I'm expecting momentum to carry on. And it might not have a very strong pullback, it might not have a strong snapback, it might only come back a little bit like a third of the way into the candle, before price continues, you know, in its in its new direction or its or its existing direction. So I'm using that third of the pullback into the candle trigger to improve my trade entry. Remember now, okay, you know, now I've uh, you know my entries at 108.72 rather than about 108.63. Okay. So it doesn't sound much, it sounds like it's only like nine pips, okay. Less, but all of that is going towards, you know, tightening my trade risk. And if I'm tightening my trade risk, well, then the opportunity for me to achieve my targets, okay, in terms of, you know, improved targets with a re reward to risk ratio greater than what I'm risking, all of that just, it just nudges the dial in my direction, okay, it just nudges the dial, all right, and that's why I suggest, you know, you start to learn it and take it on board in your own particular trading. So, I know where I'm getting in, let me just draw, get the old drawing tool up here, da, da, da. Okay, I know where I'm getting in on a third of the way to pull back into this candle. All right, so I know where I'm getting in. I know where my uh, stop loss is going to be as well. You know, it's going to be above the high. And now I need to look at where are my targets. Okay, and this is why it's called consistent targeting because once I've drawn that, used my fib tool on there, it will also identify for me the two six one fib extension and also the four two three fib extension. And so, you know, my first target is always the two six one. Uh, and also my next target to go or my stretch target, depending upon the environment I find myself in, is the 423 FIB extension. Um, but as it says there, you know, I do take note of relevant support and resistance levels. I'm not just literally just blindly putting them in. That's where I want to. But I will also to, you know, be aware of the relevant support and resistance levels that might be uh, running in that particular place. So what I've got is you know, my, my entries improve because I'm trading a pullback into the candle. And my targeting improved because A, it's consistent every time I'm just going for a consistent target. And also because it's the 261 or the 423, what I've got is what's known as an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. All right. So I'm, you know, my trade risk in that case might be what's, you know, my trade risk might be what's that between 10890 and 10872. So it might be 18 pips. Okay. But what I've got the opportunity there is, you know, the, the opportunity to make. 40 pips, okay, or in case it might be 70, 80 pips, right, which is means I'm getting good reward to risk ratios on my trades. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's, that's what I, one of the ways and the reasons to, to be able to trade well, okay, is having good asymmetric reward to risk ratio uh, on your trades. Um, so, you know, what I generally look to do is, you know, I generally use the, the 261, okay, is for what I use for what I would call my income trades, all right, which are short, sharpish intraday trades, all right, I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to hit a home run, all right, I'm not looking to, uh, uh, to you know, to, to deliver a knockout blow, these are just good, 
simple, solid, all right, trades, okay, with good asymmetric rewards or risk ratios on, you know, for my incomes, uh, for, you know, what I have in my income account. And then I basically use a standard stop loss and that third pullback. And what that means is that depending upon the instrument and the time frame, it means I'm averaging about 1.8 to 2.3 uh, R per trade, all right? So remember what I was saying, it doesn't really matter how many pips, that's one unit of risk, but I'm always looking to be able to generate an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. So if I'm risking one, and I'm averaging somewhere between, for the sake of the simple sums, if I'm averaging two to one, okay, and my reward to risk, well, that means that, you know, I've got a nice, simple way to, to basically trade and, and, and realize that I can achieve my um, asymmetric reward to risk ratios. Um, or alternatively, depending upon, you know, depending upon the actual sort of the, the instrument, depending upon the, the trend, depending upon the, the actual uh, volatility within that instrument at that particular time, I might look for the stretch target, okay, of, of the 423 FIB extension of, of that particular range. And that, of course, gives you a very good reward to risk, okay, using the standard stop loss and the third pullback, I can average somewhere between about 3.2 to 5.5 reward to risk per trade okay so depending upon the instrument depending on the time frame depending on spreads etc all right um, and so of course that is that's a very good reward to risk on my trades what you have to recognize is that you know, the trade has to go further so of course your uh, probability of success diminishes and what we're looking to do is to find a Find, you know, a, a zone that you are comfortable in, okay? You know, a zone where you are comfortable with your hit rate and comfortable with your reward to risk, and that provides positive expectancy so that you're in a position to, to know that over a sample of trades, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, the uh, positive expectancy, okay, your trading is, is delivering solid returns. So, so that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the ways we can use to improve trade entries. You know, the other thing is, you know, is when we combine that with some of the price action reversal patterns that we have talked about, okay, so far, right, and we've talked about quite a few of them, okay, in previous sessions, go back and watch them on the uh, YouTube channel if you need to you know, rejig your memory. So we talked about rejection candles and pin bars, you know, things like Bosch, da, 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 you know, rejection candles and uh, pin bars here, okay, uh, engulfing candles, we've talked uh, about okay key reversal candles these ones here at the uh, at the bottom uh, and you know star formations morning and evening star formations okay we've talked about those and inside bars and a couple of false breakouts but you know if you can understand even just those four all right as four entry triggers and be able to recognize them and you know be able to action upon them and also utilize okay the elements we've just talked about in terms of improving your trade entries well, then you know, suddenly you've got a very simple and very solid trade plan that allows you to basically, you know, engage with markets using price action trading and start to just start to nudge the odds in your favor. Right. And that's that's all we can ever do is you know, that's all we can ever do as a trader. There's no there's never any perfection. All right. There's never any guarantee. It's about what can I do to basically to, to nudge, nudge the uh, nudge the odds in my favor. OK, just to basically, you know, get the dial pointing in my direction. OK, rather than against me and all traders, you're always working at just looking to do that to to improve the way you uh, uh, operate. So um, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at a couple of examples, but we'll just focus on pin bars and engulfing candles for today because I appreciate with time, all right, you know, we uh, want to be able to, to go through that and look at the markets. So um, regardless of what I'm talking about in terms of improving trade entries, doesn't escape good trade selection, right? That's paramount. And experienced traders know that it's when you trade these patterns, okay, when to make them, that's when it makes the difference. It's all about the context. You've heard me talk about it probably every week since I've been doing... Uh, um, webinars for uh, admirals about confluence of events all right confluence events two three four things all coming together at one time and place it gives you you know a high probability that trade is more likely to move in one direction than it is another and by you know looking at those as your trade selection and then improving your entries okay by maybe sort of utilizing the third of the way to pull back into the trigger candle all of these things start to help improve your reward to risk ratio so you're looking to improve your r3s so, as I said, it's all about confluence events. Ideally, we want to see, you know, these reversal candlestick patterns, okay, like pin bars, engulfing candles, stars, formations, key reversals, on a pullback, at a level of support resistance, okay, in a trend. That's ideally what we're looking for. And when we have these two to three to four elements coming together in one time and place, that is when we are likely to have more success. And 
why there is an element of subjectivity in such trading methods because you think of it like almost like you know like lego building bricks as i said you're taking two three four elements to cut together that's what creates a trading plan you will find specific setups okay you know will suit you better so maybe maybe you discover that actually you prefer just to trade pin bars off the 50 period moving average in a trend that's it and that might be the way that's the simple easy way you can do that that's absolutely fine all right you know and you do that and you hone on that and you get really good at that and then you use the the kind of improving the entries okay in terms of using the fib tools so just as i say just just to improve your uh, reward to risk ratio okay just just looking to milk your winning trades so if you remember uh, a good pin bar should have uh, the open and the close of it within the range of the previous bar ideally what we want is the candle wick two to three times the length of the body with a good long nose protruding from all the other bars all right and what we'll find is better pin bars, they stick out and, and are very obvious. Okay, they, you know, pin bars are everywhere on a chart. As I said earlier, it's about the context, it's about the confluence of events. So I wouldn't suggest just trading a pin bar because it's pin bars there. It's about the, the context, okay, the confluence of events. Where is it occurring? Okay, that is when we start to get interested. So normally what we talked about is, you know, for you would have what we, well, it's still absolutely valid, a standard entry, okay? And how you enter as well, standard way is you would buy the break of, in a, you know, in a, if you're uh, buying a, um, a pin bar, you would buy the, the break of the high, okay? For a long trade, with your stop loss beneath the low. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that standard entry, nothing wrong whatsoever, okay? And you'll find that the vast majority of traders will trade that way, and that's absolutely fine. That's no problem at all, no problem what's, uh, whatsoever, okay? You know, that's um, that's absolutely a, a, you know, a fine way to be able to engage with markets. But what we've talked about in terms of improving our entry is having an improved entry is where, is where we actually look to have our entry about a third of the way back inside the range of the pin bar. All right. So price, you know, in the next, whether it be the next day, whatever it is, the next session of five minute candle and monthly candle price actually pulls back at some point, trades about a third of the way back into the candle. That now becomes our entry with our stop loss beneath the low. OK, stop loss in the standard place. All right. And that's what, you know, that's what we can utilize to, to basically give us a little bit more of an aggressive entry. OK, remember, our, our trade risk is going to be considerably smaller now. Now, for an engulfing candle, remember, you know, what we talked about, okay, uh, engulfing candle, just a quick reminder, the high, all right, and the low has to engulf the entire range of the preceding candle, okay? And what we want to also see is that, you know, ideally what we want to see is a nice strong body as well, a nice strong body in that engulfing candle, because remember, what we're doing is we're expecting a reverse, we're expecting a turn, we're expecting to be, you know, shown who is in control of that market, and that's what we want to utilize, okay? We want to, we want to work with... We want to ride with the, those who are in control of the market. We don't want to particularly fight them. And so, you know, if uh, you look at when we talked about standard entry, okay, nothing wrong with standard entry on a big engulfing candle would be that, you know, once again, you know, your entry in this particular case, you'd be looking to short beneath the, uh, the low of this big engulfing candle with your stop loss above the high. And then what we would normally say is, we, if you remember, we're looking for about one-to-one -one reward to risk because engulfing candles by their actions, are normally quite big candles okay and they're normally big and can be oversized some of them and so you know what we're looking at is a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio uh, and i know lots of traders who happily trade engulfing candles like that they will happily operate in that particular way but in terms of improving our trade entries well one of the ways we can do it is once again is that you know once we've identified our engulfing candle is that our entry order can be placed about a third of the way back into the candle okay back into the candle with our stop loss above all right and now we're looking to target something like perhaps the 261 fibonacci extension and so now what we're looking at is whereas if you're looking at a one-to-one -one reward to risk now it might be somewhere in the region about 1.5 to 1.8 depending upon the instrument okay the time uh, scale and the size of the engulfing candle but you know just by doing that just by trading the same the same engulfing candle what we're doing is we're just nudging, all right? We're just looking to nudge just a little bit better, okay, in terms of our reward to risk ratio. We're just looking to nudge it a little bit better in our direction. Um, so here's a, a couple of examples, all right? So this was uh, the gold daily chart. Price being in a nice uptrend. It ended with this an engulfing candle. 
And if we'd use the standard entry, you can see you know, our entry would have been at $18.99, stop loss 1961. So our trade risk, our 1R, was equivalent to $62, uh, dollars, and our target was $18.38, which was a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio, okay? However, had we used our improved entry, all right, our entry, our third of the way back into the uh, into the candle is, you know, our entry is now at $19.20, okay? Same stop loss, but now our trade risk, okay, is $41 rather than $62. And using the 261 Fibonacci extension target, which was down here, okay, now our target is 1807, which provided a 2.7 reward to risk, okay? So, you know, automatically just the, the, the same setup, okay, the same candlestick, what we're looking to do is ways to basically, just as I said, just nudge the reward to risk ratio in our favor. We're improving our trade entry, okay, and extending our targeting. And that allows us, as I said, to just for the same trade, instead of it being a one-to-one -one trade, we're looking now to generate, in that particular case, 2.7R. That's a big difference, ladies and gentlemen, all right, okay? Being able to trade like that, you know, a couple of winning trades like that, you know, starts to make a difference to your equity curve, starts to make a difference to your self-belief and confidence, okay? You know, all of these things can help, you know, as I said, put you in the right direction. Uh, this is dollar yen, okay, on the uh, four-hour chart, you know, and what we can see is that was in a very nice downtrend. Price pulled back up, didn't it? It was a, kind of almost like a flag pattern there, and that's ended by this bearish engulfing candle. Standard entry would have had you at, you know, entering short at 108.60, stop loss at 108.90 with your trade risk for 30 pips, okay? Uh, you know, and you might have targeted the big round number at 108, and that would have given you two to one reward to risk. You know, mm -hmm. lots of people would trade that and be very happy. However, with our improved entry, okay, you know, our improved entry where we're trading a third of the way back into the candle, we'd be getting short now at 108.72. Stop loss in the same place of 108.90. But now our trade risk is 18 pips, okay, as opposed to 30 pips. And what we're looking at is, you know, when we're looking at, we're having an extended target, okay, having that extended target, well, you know, suddenly now actually that provides us with a four to one reward to risk as opposed to two to one. So same candlestick, okay, in the same pattern, okay, in the, uh, in the same instrument, but by using the improved entries and by you know by uh, looking at ways to improve our uh, our targeting, suddenly we've gone from what is a two to one trade to a four to one trade. And as I said, you know a couple of those a month, okay, just being able to do that starts to make a difference to your equity curve, ladies and gentlemen. I think just one or two more examples before we finish up is that um, you know this was pound against US dollar on the four hour chart, okay, we'd actually had um, you know what we'd actually had was a very nice double bottom. Okay, nice double bottom, which was finished with a uh, bullish engulfing candle there. Okay, standard entry would have been, you know, just basically, you know, buying the break above that candle with a stop loss beneath the low. All right, we would have been long at 137.50, um, stop loss at uh, 136, uh, 136.65. So we'd have had a trade risk. Our one unit of R would have been 85 pips. Our target big round number providing you with 2.9, you know, reward to risk ratio, which in itself is a very nice, very handsome um, reward to risk for trading. If we're using our improved entry where, you know, we're entering in, you know, at a third of the way, third of the way back into the candle. Well, now our entry is at 137.20 with our stop loss in the same place. But now our trade risk is 55 pips as opposed to 85 pips. And we're looking for the 423 Fibonacci extension target, which is like 139.91. And that has generated a plus 4.9 reward to risk for that particular trade. Okay. So, as I said, same setup, okay, same setup, but by just improving your entries, looking for a stretch target, what you're in a position to do, okay, is to just, as I say, to make a big shift in your R3 numbers. Okay. And that, as you know, think of it like just any business. Any good business, you're looking to improve your profit margins, all right? You know, any good business is looking to do that. And that's, this is this in, in trading style, you're looking to improve, um, you know, your, your profit margins on your trades. So just, you know, final couple of points. Remember, um, there's no such thing as perfection, right? Sometimes a trend is so strong that it won't pull back a third of the way into the candle, all right? That happens to everybody, all right? That, you know, that everybody, that happens to everybody. Welcome to trading, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, that is actually when you could use the uh, fail to return setup that we have talked about uh, previously. So here's a bit of takeaway homework for you. Go back through some of your winning trades 
and work out how much additional alpha. Okay, how many, um, uh, how many, uh, to the, uh, how many pips would you have created using your improved entry? Darshan said, "Battle Commander, you're at your very best again today." That's very kind of you, Darshan. Thank you. That's, uh, that's a nice thing anybody said to me all day. Thank you. That's um, that's very kind of you. So go back and have a look at a few of your winning trades. What would have happened to the R3 numbers if you'd used the improved entry, okay, of a third of the way back into the candle, and also using either a 261 or a 423 Fibonacci extension target? You know, what would have happened? You know, how much would have it shifted that reward to risk ratio in your favor? Start to have a look at it. it, might give you a little bit of food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. So, to conclude, price action analysis, analysis is a way of analyzing markets using purely price action kind of self explanatory there and we are looking for price action triggers at significant price levels prices or zones it allows us to build a very simple price action trading plan however as traders it's important for us to understand trade risk and its relationship with reward to risk ratios the r3 number and by doing so then we can start to explore ways to improve our reward to risk ratios one way of doing that is by improving our entries, and in particular, using a pullback of one third of the way into our trigger candle. And that often helps nudge the, the R3, the risk reward ratio, into a more favorable territory for us, which makes a good difference to our equity curve over time, over a large sample of trades. Still requires good trade selection. Okay. You know, just that using a, a you know improved entry is not going to help you out if it's a, you know, if it was a poor trade selection in the first place. All right. But Let's see if we can have live markets. We're a little bit behind in our time, I'm afraid, today. But before we do, okay, same time on next Wednesday, I'm back to the Wednesday slot, 1st of March. Join us for the next in the price action trading guide. And what we're going to talk about is price action and commodities. Okay, you know, do they work together? Okay, what commodities are available to add more clients to trade? What do you need to know about trading commodities? And can you actually use price action trading with commodities? Does it work? Okay, is it, is, you know, is it, is it relevant? So, it's two o'clock London time next Wednesday, first of March. Check your inbox for the webinar link, or head over to the website to where uh, to sign up there. So um, I'm just you were a little bit over it. We're just going to go just a minute or two. So just bear with us. What we might look at here is Bosch. Just uh, bear with us one second. I'm overrunning just a couple of minutes, but you know I'm going to show you something here. Let's uh, yeah, bang. Okay, so. This is euro against the US dollar. So the daily chart, it was in an absolutely fabulous, fabulous uptrend. OK, um, lots of engulfing candles, key reversal candles that basically signified, OK, that you know that downtrend was over and we were on our way up. Uh, and invariably, there was you know some great ways there to basically, you know, there was uh, an engulfing candle here on the pullback. Great ways. And okay, another one there to, to basically to buy into that trend as it went until we reversed. OK, until we reversed here. And what we're going to look at is. We hit these highs, we came back, we broke the, the fractal, okay? We broke the fractal, okay? Which is a sign for me, breaking that swing point that we were into a downtrend, okay? We were into a downtrend, and that's what actually basically followed through. But you can see there yourself, price basically came back up to that level, and it's basically broken down on the daily chart. And, you know, on, a, on the daily chart, that uptrend is over, and we're now into a, into a downtrend. And so, you know, that, you know, I want to be able to sort of trade in that direction. And so when I start to, to look at, you know, what can I do? Well, you know, when I look at the kind of the four hour chart, okay, when I start to go down, you know, in four hour chart, well, then what I'm suddenly interested in is, you know, when price pulls back, okay, when price, you know, pulls back, you know, in that downtrend, okay, I'm looking at ways that how could, you know, how could I, you know, sort of utilize that, remember, to, to trade in direction of what is, you know, that kind of the daily trend. And what I'm doing is, you know, every time price pulls back, let's zoom in a little bit, okay, very quickly, do, do, do for a moment or two, is that, um, gosh, just looking at, you know, that four hour trend there is just, you know, it's in a downtrend, okay, it's been pulling back here, it puts in a star formation here, okay, puts in a bit of a rejection candle, here it comes in, puts in another rejection candle, and what we can utilize here is just, you know, as we're here, is just, do, do, do. Just going to utilize here he is up here is the fib tool okay the fib tool that we talked about and you know what i'd be looking for is when the price had pulled back looking at this is the pin bar the rejection candle here see how i can just draw it on there from the low to the high and what it does is it prints out all the levels okay that i'm interested in okay and as i said i'm interested in you know where's the you know the high it gives me the exact number 10703 right so i know my stock's going to be just above there 
at a third of the way back into the candle, which is around about here. Okay, 106.87 uh, is the entry. And what I'll be looking for, okay, I'm in a I'm in a nice trend. You know, I would be going for the, the 261 target, okay, which is 106.39. But actually, you can see for yourself that actually price continued. Actually, price continued to 43 and, and all the way. And so if you were using a trailing stop, you know, you'd still be in that and running very, very handsomely. But as I said, remember, I'm an Air Force guy. I like to hit a target, really. That's me. And so being able to just do that allows me to just basically take, you know, a bit of an improved entry, nice move down to that 261, okay? And that would provide you with a nice, good, solid trade with an R3. And you're trading with the trend there. You're not, you know, you're not fighting the trend. You're not, you know, trying to do anything, okay? And if you're an intraday trader and you went down to, let's say, uh, da, 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 let's just get rid of that. Uh, went down to the sort of 30 minute chart, okay? We went down to the 30 minute chart and there, what you'd be looking at is, um, let's just get rid of that. Oops, excuse me. Get rid of that. Fibonacci. So we can have a look, a look at the 30 minute. And we can see that actually over the last couple of days there, okay, the price has duh, 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 price has, you know, been in that trend that we saw in the four hours. So if you know if you're an aggressive trader, what you can see is that you're a dollar trade, you know, every time it's pulled back, okay, there's been pin bars there, pin bars there, okay, rejections there, pin bar rejections there, pin bar rejections there. The price, unless you've been able to use those, okay, for your improved entries, okay, with the 261 or even the 423 target would allow you to basically just trade with that trend, just using simple price action, price pulling back, bouncing off the 50 period moving average, trading in direction with what is the daily trend. Keep it nice and simple, ladies and gentlemen, all right? That's always the best way. Keep it nice and simple. You don't need to sort of try and be make it, have complicated trading products or complicated trading strategies. Keep it nice and simple and work your way there. So, um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we have uh, run out of time. We've over uh, ran there a little bit. Okay, so it's a uh, um, apologies for that. Okay, um, I hope you found that useful. I hope that's uh, giving you just a little bit of insight into how you can improve your entries. Okay, improve your reward to risk ratios, and just utilize it with price action trading in order to trade with the the bigger trend and give yourself the opportunity to you know increase your equity curve and nudge your your uh, your reward to risk ratios better in your favors so and um, with that in mind ladies and gentlemen, all that's left for me to say is thanks for joining me hope you found that session useful i hope you have a great um you know trading uh, uh, week okay i look forward to seeing you on the next uh, trading spotlight session and uh, enjoy your weekend take care everybody